Good day. This is the fourth and last in a four-part video series that has been highlighting the economic valuation of sustainable natural resource use in Malawi. The video series comes as a report of a study that was undertaken by the government of Malawi while implementing the Malawi Poverty and Environment Initiative. The aim of the study is to enhance the contribution of the sustainable management of natural resources to poverty reduction, food security and economic growth, and to facilitate the achievement of both the Malawi Growth and Development Strategy and the Millennium Development Goals. The primary aim of the study is to provide evidence on the costs and benefits of sustainable and unsustainable natural resource management in Malawi. Four natural resources were analyzed and these were forestry, fisheries, soils and wildlife. In this particular video, we are analyzing wildlife resources, especially in connection to tourism. Tourism in Malawi is overwhelmingly nature-based. It is one of the foreign currency earners for the country. In 2001, tourism generated 1.8% of the country's gross domestic product. In 2006, the foreign exchange earned from tourism had increased to 5.8% of the gross domestic product. Up to now, the significant contribution of tourism has not been fully quantified, as had been highlighted in the earlier parts of this four-part video series, natural resources are Malawi's natural capital investment. Indeed, wildlife natural resources are Malawi's capital investment with huge potential to transform the country's economy if sustainably utilized. Malawi has got four national parks, namely Nika, Kasungu, Lengwe, and Liwonde. It has four wildlife reserves, and these are Majete, Mwavi, Vwaza, and Nkotakota as well as three nature sanctuaries. These protected areas cover about 11.1% of the total land area for Malawi. Malawi's dominant vegetation is savanna, grassy plains with scattered trees. National parks and wildlife reserves together represent 13 biotic communities of animal species, of which birds are the most diverse. However, they are also the most endangered. It is estimated that Malawi has 1,029 species of amphibians, birds, mammals, and reptiles. Out of these species, 1.7% are endemic, while 2.4% are endangered. Malawi also has some 3,765 species of plants, of which 1.3% are endemic and 8.9% are protected. Wildlife resources, ecosystems, and protected areas have been undervalued, and the contribution of wildlife resources to national output is not reported in official statistics. Wildlife resources are important because they provide stable soils, reliable and clean supplies of water. The national parks, wildlife reserves and nature sanctuaries hold a wide range of biodiversity, including plants and animals, and important for aesthetic, cultural, research and educational values. National parks, wildlife reserves, and nature sanctuaries serve as carbon reserves and are extremely important as the global concern over climate change gains momentum. From economic viewpoint, wildlife resource is increasingly becoming one of the leading foreign exchange earners, especially as they regard tourism. 
the importance of wildlife resources can be directly linked to the role of tourism locally and nationally. Tourism is growing economic importance around the world and is an economic catalyst as visitors spend money directly in hotels and outside hotels, generating direct and indirect employment and revenues throughout the economy. The government of Malawi has made deliberate efforts to develop the tourism sector into becoming one of the economic workhorses of the country. This is due to the potential of this industry, but also in recognition of the fact that tobacco, the country's biggest foreign exchange earner, is generating less and less money due to the international anti-smoking lobby. According to the Malawi Growth and Development Strategy, the medium-term target is to establish Malawi as a principal and leading ecotourism destination in Africa, with focus not only on international tourists but domestic ones as well. It is for this reason that both local and international players have aggressively entered the tourism industry. One such player is Tongole Wilderness Lodge, which was granted a concession by the government of Malawi to operate in Kotakota Wildlife Reserves. Management of the lodge has made significant investment to the lodge, and it is attracting a sizable number of international as well as local tourists. Tongole, which is situated along the Bua River, has been renowned for, among other things, the lake salmon locally known as Impasa, a Lake Malawi-based fish which swims up the Bua River to breed. Tourists come here to see both game and enjoy water sports on the Bua River. The lodge has significantly invested to ensure eco-tourism. Other significant players are African Parks and Wildlife and Robin Pope Safaris, and operating under a concession in Majete Wildlife Reserve. As concession holder, both management of Tongole and Robin Pope Safaris are of the view that the government of Malawi is making positive strides in partnering with the private sector in wildlife and tourism management. If we can protect and sustain what we do have here, I want to tell you, nobody can 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 deny the fact that tourism will be the 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 the, the bread earner of Malawi. If we can re realize some of these potentials that Malawi has, I want to tell you, tourism will be the greatest, and Forest Lake Limited is one such company that want to prove the country that we have this potential in the country and we think we can make it. Poaching poses a great threat to Malawi's wildlife population. Poaching is mostly for food or sale to commercial dealers. In the past years, the population of elephants, buffalo, hippo, lion, eland, Hartbeest, roan antelope, nyala, and reedbuck have declined significantly in protected areas due to poaching. Between 1969 to 1992, the entire population of 350 elephants at Majete Wildlife Reserves was lost to poach. The Department of National Parks and Wildlife is implementing a restocking program that is aimed at replenishing animal and plant stocks. As a result of the government of Malawi's efforts to restock, the Department of National Parks and Wildlife entered into a management concession with investors to manage the reserve. From 2003 to 2009, a total of over 2,900 animals of different species have been reintroduced. We would want to make sure that uh, whatever resource development has been done here is sustained to, to a longer level. That um, I think much as we are enjoying now, 
but we can leave this uh, legacy for posterity that uh, at least uh, Malawi developed a reserve for its own people. And I think uh, um, Malawi, through the Department of Wildlife, have really supported this project. I think at the stage where we are in Malawi today, uh, we are getting that recognition that uh, the government of Malawi has you know, undertaken serious steps to develop its wildlife resources. And so, therefore, you know, the fact that the wildlife populations are beginning to breed and they are becoming visible to people, you can see even government is investing you know, in improving its staff accommodation. Uh, we are developing capacity so that staff is able to do its work properly. Uh, we are putting on roads. We are putting a, a, lot, of, a lot of other you know, infrastructure. And uh, this is what you know, makes you know, a protected area you know, attractive to visitation. Because uh, it's not good to just market Malawi. You have to develop the attractions so that when the tourism tourists come to Malawi, they are not disappointed. In 1992, in Nika National Park, there was 1,203 eland and 2,184 reedback population. However, with poaching, these were reduced to 523 and 658, respectively. The Department of National Parks and Wildlife is pursuing a comprehensive policy which embraces stakeholder involvement and participants as an important tool for effective management of protected areas. The recommendations further says that this needs to happen urgently and local communities surrounding protected areas must benefit. Nika National Park is considered as Malawi's gem with savanna grasslands and scattered trees. The park is home to different species of animal, including zebra and antelopes. The community around Nika National Park benefit from the park and work hand in hand with park officials to ensure that poaching, which is a big threat, is controlled. In return, the people are allowed access to the park to harvest wild mushrooms, thatching grass, and honey. Before uh, collaborative wildlife management came into being, we were um, uh, a purely policing entity, arresting and fines. We, we, we had no interface with the local communities. No. So that approach was not working at all. So it was necessary that uh, we, we take uh, on board local community members to give a hand in the conservation efforts and also at the same time uh, to let them know that government was protecting these, uh, these areas you know, for their own good. So the key word there is a sustainable utilization of these resources. At present, the biggest threat to wildlife natural resources which are in protected areas is poaching. Poaching has a negative impact on tourism. When animals in protected areas are poached, their population decreases and are rarely seen. This then affects the numbers of visitors to these protected areas, as the principal reason of going there is to see wildlife. Poaching jeopardizes the future of ecotourism development in Malawi, as ecotourism relies on wildlife resources. Most national parks and wildlife reserves are still underdeveloped in terms of ecotourism infrastructure. They lack all-weather roads, accommodations, and visitor information centers are needed to facilitate growth of ecotourism in these protected areas. This has been the last in a four-part video series that has been looking at the economic valuation of natural resources in Malawi. We have been looking at the four natural resources, namely fisheries, forestry, soils, and wildlife. The common similar finding was that all natural resources contribute significantly to Malawi's economy. 
although their true economic contribution is not fully quantified. It was further found that the potential contribution of these resources would be significant if they were sustainably utilized. Natural resources are our natural capital. If we invest in their sustainable utilization, they will serve us better. Our day, our new body.